Okay, we're out here at MV Tactical in Peru, California, and today we have something interesting. We're going to take a look at uh, four different uh, but very popular shotguns. Uh, they're all semi-auto. They're all 12 gauge because that's God's own gauge. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a look at them and sort of evaluate them against each other uh, in a couple of different ways, including the sort of patterns that they throw, the um, general accuracy, which we'll check with slugs, and overall shootability. Uh, going from uh, left to right as you see them, we have the uh, very exciting A300. Uh, really nice shotgun. Um, I don't want to say it's budget price because it's not cheap, but it's definitely probably one of the better values in the market. Uh, next is the Remington 1187, uh, which is uh, just an old standard, a really good shotgun, tried and true, um, and there's a million of them out there. Following that, we have the Beretta 1301, basically the more refined version of the A300, pretty popular. Uh, and then finally, it's the new Mossberg 940, and that is the only shotgun out here equipped with a red dot sight, and we'll see how that plays into it. We are fortunate today, we're joined by Ron Clayton, who is the shotgun guru, and teaches most of the shotgun classes out here at MB Tactical. Uh, all right, uh, Ron is gonna shoot the Mossberg 940. Uh, what ammo are we using today? Well, we're gonna be using a Ranger, double at buck, two and three quarter inch. It's low recoil, nine pellet. Great, so let's shoot a group of three, uh, three rounds. You'll notice how professionally he loads that. So I got three loaded in. All right, whenever you're ready. All right, this is the Mossberg 940. Uh, if we discount the giant hole for the wadding, I think we're looking at about one, two, about three and a half inch uh, pattern. That particular shotgun comes to us with a choke in it, so that might be part of the equation. That's not a bad pattern at seven yards. All right, so now Ron is shooting the Beretta 1301. Uh, this appears to be the original version, not the new fancy expensive modified one. All right, whenever you're ready. All right, same ammunition. Okay, this is the Beretta 1301. Uh, pattern opened up a fair bit compared to the Mossberg. Uh, we're looking at about one, two, three, four, maybe coming on five inches of spread, uh, which is what we'd expect to see with an open choke uh, at about seven yards, maybe even a little, a little wider, uh, but that's within keeping with what we would expect. So apparently with the A300, you need to hit the bolt release at the back, not the front. So yeah, in the different shotgun forms that has been uh, addressed, there's fixes for it. One, sending the gun back and getting a new from the company, but there's right. simple fixes for it. Well, I think just knowing it would be the first fix, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's shoot it and see how it goes. All right, the uh, A300 is outstanding. Whoever shot this gun really did a great job. Uh, oh wait, that was me. Uh, outside of a errant wadding up here. Uh, so we're looking at it about one, two, three. Uh, yeah, probably uh, just over three inch spread. Really tight, uh, excellent pattern. Uh, that's just devastating, really impressive. All right, finally, we've got the uh, 1187. This is a really uh, common, popular older shotgun. Uh, this one actually came to us from the uh, uh, from the world of uh, three gun, where it competed with distinction for about two years. Uh, I believe it's a uh, John Paul configuration. All right, let's see how it goes. Oh. Uh, well, the winner today in terms of the pattern is clearly the 1187. Uh, this is ridiculous. So here's our wadding, but the pattern probably starts right around here. And uh, one, two, you're looking at maybe under three, three inches easily. Uh, 
probably closer to about two and a half to two, three quarter inches. Uh, that's a really solid uh, buckshot pattern. All right, uh, what do we got there? The uh, Mossberg 940? Yep. All right, uh, same thing. It's the nine pellet Federal. Yep, Ranger nine pellet double up buck. All right, let's see how it goes. 15 yards. Okay, so we're looking for nine pellets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, not a bad shot group. Uh, a uh, embarrassingly low wad. Uh, that could be devastating for the recipient. Uh, and so what are we looking about? One, two, three, four, five, six. Probably about six and a half, uh, maybe seven inches across. Uh, in keeping with the pattern, again, it's about half an inch or slightly over half an inch per yard. Not a bad shotgun pattern. All right, so we do have the uh, Breda uh, 1301. We're using the same Ranger, uh, two and three quarter inch, nine pellet double at buck, low recoil. And again, we're at 15 yards. Thirteen oh one, uh, definitely the widest pattern so far. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's nine, uh, nine pellets, and that's kind of what I would expect to see from an open choke. What do you think, Ron? Yeah, at that distance with that that spread pattern, it's a consistent. Yeah. Uh, so it's doing what open choke shotguns do. Uh, not bad. Uh, just uh, definitely a limitation that the user has to understand. Uh, A300, uh, let's see if I can get it to go forward. Yes, as long as my fingers are out of the way. Uh, 15 yards, let's see how it goes. This is amazing, this is the A300. That has a screw-in choke. Um, and we're under six inches here. <clears throat> uh, nicely centered. Uh, a really, this is this is uh, more than just a good shot from a shotgun. This would be phenomenal at 15 yards. This yep. is, uh, I mean, this is a, a solid tactical tool. And here we are with the 1187, and this is far and away the tightest pattern. Uh, outside of that shotgun, apparently not enjoying the low recoil. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pellets. Uh, just a, an amazing shot group. All right, we are now about 25 yards out from our targets. Uh, Ron, you're the shotgun guy. 25 yards with uh, most shotguns. What are your thoughts? Uh, with I would not use buckshot. The spread pattern is going to be too much. Uh, higher risk of flyer, and we're responsible for every pellet that goes downrange, correct? So if we have rounds that are going to miss the target, that's liability. I don't want our crew. Excellent. And yet, here we are on the range, and we're going to shoot at 25 yards, yep. but strictly for science. Yeah, so uh, same ammunition, Ranger, two and three quarter inch, low recoil, double out buck. And this is the Mossberg 940. 940. Doing a hold center mass. Stand by, let me put my ears on. All right, holding center mass. All right, here we are, 25 yards. So what do we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So really we've got, I mean, it just happens the pose of the target indicates that there's two that are going to be flyers for sure. Uh, and to Ron's point, every pellet downrange carries with it a lawsuit. Uh, 25 yards might be the uh, beyond the outside limit. I think 15 yards, this shotgun was a solid performer. Uh, anything probably with inside the house, you think about 25 yards, 75 feet. I don't know where you live, but in my house, I don't have anything that long. But for sure, a 15 yard shot, 45 feet uh, down any hallway, I'd be comfortable with that, with, yep. uh, but not 25 yards. No. So the Breda 1301, uh, we're using Ranger, Two and three quarter inch nine pellet double at buck. Now no this hole. shotgun has an open bore, so I think if anything uh, becomes irresponsible at twenty five yards, this would probably be it. 
All right. All right, this is the 1301. Let's see what we got here. Here's one, here's two, here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I don't know if we have a new hole up there. Is there two in this one? Uh, oh yeah, this might actually be two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, all right, well, just by, I guess, sheer luck, we can say, all nine pellets are on the paper target. Uh, if we kind of extrapolate this, I mean, this is a small human silhouette, right? Um, but nevertheless, uh, it's a high, uh, it's a high risk shot at that distance, uh, with a, um, not a really strong solid guarantee of all pellets. If I had to take it, I might, if I didn't have time to switch to a slug, but, uh, we'll take a look at some slugs in a little bit and see how that goes. All right. This is the A300. Starting to figure out the uh, bolt release. This one does have a choke in it. Let's see how it goes. Super soft shooting. All right, the A300. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I gotta say, uh, not a bad pattern. Still, we're 25 yards out. Again, uh, high risk uh, a shot, but uh, I would feel more comfortable taking the shot with this one than either of the other two uh, in terms of errant pellets. All right, last but not least, the uh, 1187. This thing has been uh, stellar in terms of uh, patterning. Uh, it does not seem to like the low recoil stuff. Uh, it could just be me the way I shoot it. Uh, all right, now we turn our attention to the 1187. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What am I missing? Possibly nine. nine. All right, uh, I got to say, uh, that shotgun, as we noted, has those adjustable high visibility sights. If we moved the sight over slightly to the left, every one of those pellets would be on the body. Every one of them. We are about uh, 37 yards from the silhouette target. We're using bullseyes. Um, we've got the Mossberg 940. The slugs we're using is a Federal Premium Tactical Rifled Slug, two and three quarters inch, 70 millimeter. That's the markings on it. All right, safety's off. All right, well, good grief. Uh, this is the uh, Mossberg 940. First of all, it's got a red dot sight, which makes it a little easier to get precise, repeatable aiming. I got This is absurd. This is headshots all day long. Uh, probably, uh, I've shot it, I've taken headshots on this, on paper targets out at 50 yards uh, with 100% success. Uh, just, uh, it shines. I mean, that's, uh, that's really accurate. The Breda 1301, same ammunition, the uh, Federal Premium Tactical Rifled Slug. No issues with the bolt release regarding on placement of depressing it, unlike the A300. I might have pulled that one. All right. Do you want to fire a fourth shot if you think you, uh, yes. just so we can get a good representative three round sample? All right, this is the 1301. Ron called one as uh, a flyer low. Uh, otherwise we have these uh, three shots. Uh, certainly acceptable. Um, uh, you know, body shots all day long, uh, probably head shots all day long at 25 and in. Uh, and I would not hesitate to take that out to 50 or 75 yards uh, on a human-sized target. 
All right, this is the Breda A300, same ammunition. Yep, got to wiggle that bolt release. Yeah, don't send that back. If you can't fix it, I probably can. Okay. Well, we know somebody who will, but <laughs> probably better one of us do it. All right, like the uh, 940, uh, we've got two rounds touching and then one over here that uh, that's probably not the shotgun, I gotta tell you. Yeah. Uh, I think same thing like the Mossberg, uh, headshots at 35 for sure. Uh, you know, you may, well, I guess those sights are not adjustable at all. No, not on the A300. Okay, so maybe, uh, I wouldn't take headshots at 35 just because you can't adjust it to the point of impact, point of aim. Uh, what you got is what you got. So, uh, But in terms of accuracy, it's right there. It, it's unfortunate that those can't be adjusted, but there is a rail on there where mm -hmm. you could put a uh, red dot on there and probably get good adjustment. We have the Remington 1187, same ammo. I. I actually like how sensitive that lift gate is. Yeah. I know that some people might be bothered by it. I actually like it. Oh, I, I like it. I, I think this design is, uh, it's a really good design. I'm, it ensures that your hand's out of the way of the charging handle when it goes forward. Yes, for sure. That's one of the places where the A300 kind of falls short. Yes. All right, so we knew that the uh, 1187 had been shooting high and to the right. Uh, and here we have two rounds here and then uh, one up here, which Ron can't explain. Uh, it is what it is. Human error. Uh, but anyway, uh, again, you got pretty good. I think that shotgun exhibits pretty decent accuracy uh, with the slugs. I can't see it from here. From Trust me, it looks good. Okay, cool. All right, uh, so just wrapping up. Uh, Ron, you're kind of the shotgun guy. What are your thoughts on these? So I don't have any issues with any of these uh, samples of shotguns. They're, they're all really good quality guns. Uh, I'm not happy with the sensitivity, ammo sensitivity with the uh, 1187. We had a couple malfunctions with the low recoil uh, buckshot. Zero malfunctions with the low recoil slug. Um, I like the rifle sights on this. Granted, my grouping on the rifle sights was abysmal. But I do like the uh, rifle sights on that. Uh, the next gun I would go with, without any favoritism, uh, would be the A300. I do like it. I own it. But uh, I would think that would be my number third choice. Uh, second choice would be the 1301. And the top, in my view, is the uh, Mossberg 940. I really like that one. I uh, Exactly the same. Uh, I like the 1301. Uh, it is, uh, this is the original model, uh, so you're going to lose some patterning. There's no choke. Uh, I suppose I could put a choke in here, uh, thread it for one and put one in, uh, but, um, or I could have it backboard. Uh, but the functionality of the shotgun is really good. It's, um, I don't want to say complicated, but it's a different manual of arms than, than a lot of the shotguns on I'm used to, uh, but it functions great. Uh, and once you learn it, uh, it's quite usable. Um, I think for me, I, I might actually score them a little bit different. If the A300, uh, if the bolt release uh, was fixed, that would be number two. But for me, the Mossberg, uh, that's number one. And one of the things I like about the Mossberg is uh, it, this particular shotgun, uh, 
I like the fact that the red dot sight is mounted directly to the receivers. There's no Picatinny rail that's mounted to the receiver and then the sight on top of that. In other words, there's fewer links in the chain. Uh, this seems to be pretty well mounted. It's a really good fit. Uh, you know, the footprint is, is really well cut. Um, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty good setup. Uh, the shotgun itself is super intuitive to use. Uh, it's grouped nicely. It patterned nicely. Uh, it did everything you want a shotgun to do. Uh, the only thing uh, I would add to this shotgun to make it really viable is a light. And there's obviously you can see there's places to do that. So. Also on the uh, Mossberg, I, this is one of the, the, the for me if I'm going to choose guns, I like the ambidextrous safety uh, on the Mossberg series. Um, it's user friendly for everybody. Uh, well, as opposed to the Bretas, for sure. Right handed, right? You gotta remove, you gotta break your pistol grip when you uh, put the safety back on. Uh, Remington is in the back of the trigger group, but same thing, it's on the right hand side of the uh, trigger group as opposed to the Mossberg. All right. Good job. All right.